there thanks for joining me today I'm just gonna get um, the fabric ready I'm gonna do this applique series kind of thing um, so right now we're gonna do the very first part which is getting our fabric ready for applique okay so what we're gonna do is I'm going to go from the very basics of applique getting your fabric ready for applique cutting it in the um, the brother scanning cut and then taking it to the embroidery machine and using it on a design okay so but the first part is going to be getting our fabric ready and this part you can use for your cutting machine you can use for um, you know hand cutting and also if you want to draw on any of this stuff and then hand cut it um, instead of you know waiting for the die line to show you where to cut. So I hope that that makes sense. Applique seems to be really confusing and I agree it is confusing. So I'm showing you what I know to my knowledge at this point in my life, but I know that there is so much more to things. Um, the series is going to be long and lengthy and step by step and kind of drawn out. I'm not going to try to go quick with anything. So um, that's why I'm going to chunk it up into pieces and parts. Okay. All right. So first of all, if you're going to use your cutting machine and you have a brother scan and cut, sometimes they come with this or you can purchase this in at your dealer. It's your local dealer. It's the iron on fabric applique contact sheet. Okay. And this stabilizes the material so that it's easy to cut on the scan and cut. It kind of makes the material thick. And that's what you want on the scan and cut with your fabric so that it doesn't pull on it. Okay. And I think I haven't tried this yet. I haven't even opened it. So you guys get to be guinea pigs just like me. <laughs> But this is Heat and Bond Light. This is my favorite thing to use for all things applique. It's the purple package. There's a red package and a purple package. And the red package is more for patches. This is a purple package. And this is lightweight and sewable. This is for applique as well. And I just have a big bucket full of fabric, of scrap fabric that already has it on it. I have a video, an older video, showing how I just take all my scrap and it's really simple. I just take it and lay all the scrap pieces out and iron them on. It's not rocket science. But this is what it looks like. Okay. Has this like gritty film and a paper backing. Okay. And you just iron that on and you get this. And then you can iron this on. It's temporarily adhesive. It's not long-term adhesive. It eventually will come off if you don't sew it onto the, onto the material. But you can temporarily put it onto your fabric so that you can sew it on and um, it stays on really nicely. I'm not sure if this does the same things. It looks like it does. I read the directions, but I'm not really good at absorbing them sometimes. <laughs> but they are on there and I know I will have to before I start and then the third way that I wanted to try have not tried this yet is um, freezer paper okay so I saw this on Apple lover 53 page 53's YouTube page and um, so you just take your your fabric and if you don't want to put heat and bond on it because heat and bond is and this is too it's permanent it stays on your fabric all the time it makes your fabric kind of plasticky so say what you're doing you can't you can't have that you're, you're doing something that needs to be soft and you know maybe you're doing quilt squares you know you don't want to put heat and bond on the back of quilt squares because that's going to make your whole entire quilt like this which you don't want that at all you want it to be soft and supple and easy for the person who's going to quilt it or for you. So I, you know, I'm going to go ahead and iron that out, but you sandwich it basically and turn it into what makes it feel like cardstock. And then you put it onto your scan -and cut mat and it's supposed to be strong enough to cut it. Now that same um, theory could go if you did it with this, sorry, I bumped it. Um, 
if you went ahead and did this and then drew your applique on to this or pinned your pattern onto this and cut it out, you probably still do, do just great. So let's go ahead and get started. So the heat and bond light, I'm not going to really show you how to do it. It's very simple. You, if there was nothing on here, you put it face down and you put the bumpy side down, paper side up, iron it on. And I almost always try to have some parchment paper over everything so that nothing gets on my iron. The parchment paper doesn't have any stick to it. And this is a Reynolds kind that I just found. It has, I don't know if you can see that graphs on it, graph paper. Let's see, I'll show you. It's Reynolds Kitchen Genuine Parchment Paper. Okay, and the freezer paper I have is also Reynolds. This stuff is awesome though. I've been using it to like cover my counters when I'm making food and stuff like that and just all kinds of things. Separate paintings so they don't get stuck to each other. This stuff is great for everything. I've been putting it underneath where I'm painting too. So that's the heat and bond light way. I will um, post my old video down in the, the thing below so that you can see how to do that if you still need to be shown. Um, I have a feeling that it's going to be exactly like this heat and bond, but for the sake of the video and for the sake of people with their scanning cuts, we're going to use this. Okay. All right. I always feel like a rebel when I use something for the first time. <laughs> oh, this feels way different. Oh boy, it feels like wax paper. Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to cut a little bit more than generous piece. I use all my straps, so. And I hate, like, when L's are left off the edge of things. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I'm not really sure what that iron sign means, but I'm guessing that means that's the side that needs to be ironed. Let's read. Use the standard mat for cutting for about iron for 20 seconds, depending on fabrics type. For piecing projects like packwork, blah 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 blah. exactly sure which side to put it on so which is why I really love having parchment paper this isn't really all you can't tell which side is which well that looks more papery so let's do a little test Paper taco. Okay. So of course we're gonna keep it face down because we want our fabric to stay looking like fabric. And I'm gonna put this kind of sorta of shiny side down over it and put the side that said iron on it over that. And oh of course my iron is I have an iron that automatically turns off after 30 seconds I mean 30 minutes so I have to turn it back on hopefully it's still warm enough though I 
I know after doing it, it seems obvious that it was that specific shiny, gluey look inside. But I always like to double check things before I try to use them. Ooh, that's really hot. Okay. So do we peel the back off or is it supposed to stay with this backing? Oh no, there's the back. Okay, so yeah, it's pretty much just like the heat and bond. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Well, first, we that was fun learning that. So whenever you have your fabric sheet that hopefully either came with it or you had to purchase the waxy papery look inside, that's the side that goes down onto the back side of your fabric like that so that they can turn into glue and then you peel this papery part off okay so that looks like that and heat and bond light looks like this and I'm showing that to you specifically just in case you took it out of the package you know any of this stuff out of the package and never put it back in the package sometimes I do that and I just don't know what things look like so now we're gonna do our um, our little piece in the freezer paper for the scanning cut. Now we're going to put our freezer paper. We want the papery side up and the shiny side on the inside, okay? And it's going to look, well, what it's going to do is it's going to melt these pieces together. It's going to melt everything together, but the, the glue isn't so strong that it stays with your thing. It comes right off, okay? And you can use the same method without doing the taco thing. Um, you can iron fabric onto a piece of um, freezer paper and feed it through your uh, inkjet printer or even probably your laser printer but you can feed it through the printer and print right onto your fabric so that's another fun thing you can do with this but let's stick to what we're doing okay so we got it in a little taco Okay, so let's go ahead and get this piece ready using the rest of the um, Brother Scanning Cut applique stuff. Okay, oh look at that perfect size. Okay, and I always like to make it just a little bit bigger. Okay, so let's turn it face down. And let's go ahead and iron it real quick. Okay. Put your parchment down. Make sure your fabric is face down. And then remember the gluey side. You have to look for it. So it kind of looks like that. And that's the papery side. You'll be able to see where the folds are and make scratches in it and stuff. So go ahead and put that glue side down onto your fabric. Top of your parchment paper. And then. parchment paper sliding around. Oops. Okay, so I want to give it some really good pressure. It says about 20 seconds. Yeah, I'm just kind of going over this first since it slid around a little bit. 
whenever I was first putting everything together. So now I'm going to hold it down. Okay, it's really hot. So you might want to give it a second to cool, not like I did last time where I just grabbed it, or like I'm doing now. <laughs> See why you want to put parchment down? All of that plastic is going to go somewhere and you don't want it to go on your ironing board. Okay. And you just peel the backing off. There we go. And then you cut all this off, of course, or just yank it off. Alrighty, so I'll be back in a minute with the cutting machine part. <laughs> See ya.